Who's the other one? Pernak here, and I've got a new episode of Printmaking with Matt Pernak. Okay, today's topic is going to be all about ink modifiers. It doesn't matter what kind of ink you're using, whether it's a water-based, oil-based, or any of the other options out there, there is always a modifier available. And the whole reason we use modifiers is because your printmaking ink doesn't behave the way you want it to, or you're having a problem with printing and you don't know how to fix the problem. So modifiers can often help you print better if you use them properly. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to look at water-based inks and the modifiers for them. While water-based inks are good because they're easy to clean up and they're less mess, the main problem with them is they dry out too quickly, especially when you roll them out with your brayer and it's a nice thin line. Um, to combat that, you want to use, let's see here, come on focus, retarder, there it is. Most water-based inks will make their own retarder. You don't have to use a specific brand, they're pretty much all the same thing. The other thing you can also try is this is also a retarder for acrylic painting. It's going to be a little bit more viscous than your speedball retarders or any other brand that you're using but you can still use this and it will still slow down the drying time of your ink and that's good because to get a longer working time means you can work longer with the ink and you don't have to worry about drying out on your palette you only need if you're using one like this a few drops of this and with this just the just a little bit i mean you don't need to use much like if I were to say, eh. well, just a little dab. As you can see, just a little bit, like what's on the tip of my finger. You don't need much, and you just mix it into your ink, and you use it like that. And then it keeps your plate from drying out. And if it's still drying out too quickly, add a little bit more. Work a little bit at a time. You might have to restart over with the ink and scrape it off and redo it, but until you get it down, you don't need much. So, like I said, a few drops of it. Retarder is also useful in slowing the drying time of water-soluble oil-based inks. So if you're using water-soluble oil-based inks and you roll them out on your, pal uh, your palette or your plate or whatever you're using, and they're getting too tacky too soon while you're rolling them out, um, try using a little bit of acrylic retarders. They actually work. And how do I know this? The chemist from Daniel Smith, the guy who is responsible for researching and making and discovering inks, and the guy who found out how to make this water-soluble oil, told me retarder. If your inks are drying on your plate way too quickly, use retarder. The next modifier I'm going to talk about is extender or transparent base. They use either name, but they're both the same thing. So this is an extender. It looks very similar to a retarder. Uh, it's just a little bit lighter. It's basically clear, transparent ink. And why would you use this? Well, let's say you're working with um, two colors. Let's say a red and a yellow. And you want to get an orange when you overlap two colors. You use a transparent base with them to make the inks more transparent. So that way when you lay the two colors on top of each other, you're going to get more of that effect of where they lay on top of each other, you're gonna, they're going to become orange. So it's really why you use a transparent base, especially if you're using inks and you want where they overlay each other to show up. Or perhaps you want to just lighten the color and make it more transparent in general if you're just printing with one color and you just don't want it super rich and dark. Um, that is what you would use transparent base for. Now, transparent base is also available in pretty much any line of printmaking ink you can get. Uh, this one happens to be water-based right here. This one is a transparent etching base for etching inks. This one is my water-soluble transparent medium. They're all the same thing, and they all work. But make sure you use the ones that you 
use for your type of ink. If it's water-based, use water-based. If it's oil-based, use oil-based inks. The next modifier I want to talk about is calcium carbonate right here. It is a powder, so it's not like any of the others where it's a liquid. And its most popular usage is actually in gouache. And those of you who are familiar with gouache, and if you're not familiar with gouache, gouache is a watercolor that is opaque. And that is the main thing that calcium carbonate does. It makes your inks more opaque. Now by nature, some pigments are more transparent, especially your quinacodones and your thalos. They are very transparent inks, and they're meant to be transparent. That's just how they are. Now if you add a little calcium carbonate to it, and it, what it will do is it's an inert white. So when you add it to an ink, it's going to make your ink less transparent, would be the best way of saying it. Uh, it will also do one other thing. It will also make your ink flat or matted. It will have a matte finish. It will not be shiny or glossy. That is why it's very useful. And as an inner white, adding it to any ink you add to will not change the color of the ink. As you know, if you add white to red, you get pink. But if you add calcium carbonate, which is an inner white, you're not going to get pink. You'll keep red. Only your red will be more opaque. So if you're trying to layer colors on top of each other and you don't want the previous colors showing through, using a little bit of calcium carbonate will work very well. You do have to be careful. If you use too much of it, you can make your ink really thick and pasty. and It'll be very, very, very matted. Especially if you're using glossy colors and matted colors it can create a textural difference you may not want. So be a little careful with it. And if you are going to use it, try and wear some kind of mask. Because while it's not toxic, it is a powder and it can cause uh, respiratory problems that are more like irritants, not something toxic. Now while we are on the topic of powders like our calcium carbonate, we are now going to talk about magnesium carbonate. I don't use magnesium carbonate because I don't really have much of a use for it. It is also a inert white, but it does not increase opacity. Basically all it does is it thickens ink. You add a little bit to your ink and you can thicken it up. So let's say you're working on an etching and you need a thicker ink. You add a little magnesium carbonate and guess what? It's all of a sudden thicker. Or if you want to alter your relief ink and make it a little bit thicker. You can do that with calcium carbonate. Any medium that you use, whether it's a water-based or an oil-based, you can use magnesium carbonate. Like I said, it's a simple thing. It's only for thickening your ink. So the one modifier I use the most with oil-based inks or water-soluble oil-based inks is a tack reducer. A tack reducer does two things. One, it prevents your paper from sticking to the block when you try to remove it. Another one is if you have large flat areas of color, it helps those to print a little better so you don't get those little white splotches in the middle of everything. Is it perfect? No, but it does help quite a bit. Now I don't use tack reducer if I'm doing something that doesn't have large areas of color because then it makes the ink a little too slippery, if that's what it means. If you want to understand that, it makes the ink a little too slippery. So when you go to put your brayer down, sometimes your paper will shift on you. So sometimes you do need that tack. So if you're doing something with a lot of delicate line work and not a large, not a lot of areas of large color, don't use it. Now my go-to is the Daniel Smith Miracle Gel Reducer. Like this. You just use a little bit of this. You don't need a lot. Now unfortunately, I love Daniel Smith inks. I think they're the best inks on the market. They just don't make them anymore, mostly because there's no profit in them. No one wants to carry any of their printmaking supplies, so they stop making them. Until we get a bunch of companies wanting to carry their product, it won't happen. Now, a good alternative to it, I've heard, is Hanko's Wonder Gel. It's supposed to be 
a replacement for Miracle Gel Reducer. At least that's what they claim. I haven't had any access to it or been able to use it, so I can't give you any reviews on how good it is. But it is a tack reducer and it's going to do the same thing as the Miracle Gel Reducer. Now there are a couple other products out there that are very similar. Another one is also from Hanco and is called Setswell. And Setswell is a soy based product. Um, it does the same things except it's soy based. So it works really well. You just got to be careful. You can't use too much of it because like most soy based oils, it dries by absorbing into the paper. So if you use too much of it, you can get little rings and halos around your the sides of your uh, prints and things like that from wherever your marks are, wherever it prints. Uh, finally, there is one other one from Graphic Chemical, and it's called Easy Wipe. Now, this one is mostly used with people uh, who are doing etchings, and it can be used as a tack reducer, but it also makes your plates easier to wipe clean when you're after you've put the um, ink on the plate. It's just to make your wiping easier, make it less work for you. So. But it can, if you have that, it can also be used, like I said, as a tack reducer. All right. Another one that I'm going to talk about is Burnt Plate Oil. Yes, it's another Daniel Smith product. I worked there for seven and a half years, people. I got a lot of their brand of products, even though they're no longer made now. But Burnt Plate Oil comes in several varieties. Typically, you will see a zero or a double zero or even a triple zero. So the lower the number triple zero or double zero being the lower are more viscous while your higher numbers your zero or your ones your twos I mean graphic chemical makes one that goes all the way up to eight are thicker and heavier and really what they're good for is re use a use a little bit of this because you don't need to use much and as they go higher in number they also get thicker and increase the tack of ink. So if you want ink to be a little bit more tacky, you add a little bit to this ink. Or if you want to make it more fluid or more viscous, you add a little bit to the, you add the lower number ones, like your double zeros, to your ink, and it will make it a little bit more viscous. You want to use it sparingly, because if you use it too much, it can get more transparent, unless it's the effect you want to use. Finally, this is a modifier that I actually use almost every time I use oil-based inks or water-soluble oil-based inks, and it is cobalt dryer. You can see this one is very well used. It's kind of slightly purpley or blue. It's basically a drying oil. Um, it is toxic. It's very toxic. You don't want to really touch it with your hands, hence why I'm wearing gloves while handling this. You put a few drops into your ink, mix it up, and what it does is it speeds up your drying time of inks. So you can do layers better if you need to do layers. Um, and so if you would need to print something, wait a little while and print it, um, do another color on top, and you're having problems with colors trans, you know, getting picked up by the plates, using this can help your ink dry faster so you can work using less time. I like it because after I use it, I can hang up my prints on my lines out there and the ink will dry faster so it doesn't smear or well it doesn't smear it doesn't get ruined my prints which is why I like cobalt dryers you can also use any kind of uh, Japan dryers will also do the same thing uh, once again be careful with them most of them are very dark in color they work well with dark colors um, so you can actually use them a lot more heavily you can use more of it in a heavier in a darker color like your blacks or your purples or your blues uh, but do be careful since I said it is kind of it's purpley or blue it can tint colors now I've used it with oil or uh, I've used it with whites and yellows and things like that very light colors and had no effect on the way it color shifts anything but if you use too much of it it can change it so you do want to be careful when using it especially wear gloves because you don't want that on you. Now, I don't ever have the problem, but as I use water-soluble oil-based inks, um, some people complain that they can be too thick. 
And if they are, you're supposed to thin them down. And I've seen people use water. You don't want to use water with those. Um, it's basically because of the basic chemical composition of them. Once you introduce water to water-soluble oil-based inks, it kind of makes them not work and actually makes them get gummy and it alters the way it starts to act and it's just not good because it's breaking apart the bonds that are keeping everything together. So if you want to thin down anything with water-soluble oil-based inks, like which I use, which I love the Daniel Smith ones, uh, like I said, there's the Speedball Professionals and Charbonnel's Aqua Wash and also the um, Cranefield Coleco, I believe is how you pronounce it, uh, all very popular, especially the Cranefield that one is very popular in the community, I've noticed. But if you want to thin it down, don't use water. The only thing I've found, and I've used it before, but I don't have it, is Charbonnel's Aqua Wash Oil. It's an oil for thinning down water-soluble oil-based inks. And it's very useful. And it comes in a little tiny glass bottle. And you just add a few drops of it to your ink to make it more loose and to thin it down, which can be a very good thing if you're tr if you want to keep it with the thing. Now you could also use your burnt plate oil and things like that. Just be careful not to use too much of it because if you use too much of these products, um, especially burnt plate oil or any oil-based products with water-soluble oil-based products you will change the oil-based product so it doesn't want to become water miscible. So you're not going to be able to clean it up with soap and water or, like me, Windex. Well, everyone, that is everything that I know about ink modifiers, how to use them, what they're used for. I only went over the most common ones and ones that I use or have used in the past. If you have any other questions, you can always post them down below. I will answer them. Remember, always give me a thumbs up. Give me a like on down below. That helps me out. You can always subscribe to my channel, too, if you want to see new videos when I have them come out, normally every Sunday, unless there is a computer issue. Or you can follow me on my Instagram, my Tumblr, or my Twitter. All those links are down below. Until next time, everyone, see ya. Bye.